The year is 2055. I want you to imagine this. You're standing in the control room of the largest radio telescope ever built, a sphere three kilometers wide nestled in a crater on the far side of the moon. For 30 years, it has listened, scanning hundreds of billions of stars, analyzing trillions of signals. And in all that time, across all those light years of empty space, silence, complete cosmic silence. This isn't science fiction. This is the Fermi paradox. And as a physicist who has spent five decades studying the universe, I can tell you the silence is deafening. And it may be telling us something we desperately need to hear. I was seven years old when I first looked through a telescope. My father, a high school chemistry teacher, had set up a small refractor in our backyard in Northern California. He showed me Saturn. The rings were so perfect, so clear, that I thought it was a trick. A photograph taped to the lens. But it wasn't. It was real. And I remember asking him that night, Dad, are there people out there? He smiled and said, I don't know, son, but if there are, they're probably wondering the same thing about us. That question stayed with me. Through university, through my doctorate in astrophysics, through decades of research on exoplanets, radio astronomy, and the evolution of intelligent life. And here's what I've learned. The universe should be teeming with life, but we can't find any. Let me give you some numbers. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, contains somewhere between 100 billion and 400 billion stars. Based on data from the Kepler Space Telescope and recent surveys, we now estimate that roughly 20 to 50 percent of those stars have planets in their habitable zones, regions where liquid water could exist. That's tens of billions of potentially habitable worlds in our galaxy alone. And here's where it gets more astonishing. There are an estimated two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Do the math and you're looking at something like 10 to the 24th power. That's a one followed by 24 zeros, potentially habitable planets. That's more planets than grains of sand on every beach on Earth. According to research published in the Astronomical Journal in 2021, conservative estimates suggest there could be as many as 300 million potentially habitable Earth-like planets in the Milky Way alone. So, where is everybody? In 1950, a brilliant physicist named Enrico Fermi was having lunch with colleagues at Los Alamos National Laboratory. They were discussing UFO sightings and the probability of extraterrestrial life. And suddenly, Fermi stopped mid-conversation and asked, where is everybody? It seems like a simple question, but it opened a wound in cosmology that has never healed. Because here's the thing, our galaxy is about 13.6 billion years old. Earth formed just 4.5 billion years ago. That means there were billions of years, billions, for other civilizations to arise before us. And if even a tiny fraction of those habitable planets developed intelligent life, and if even a small percentage of those civilizations survived long enough to develop space travel, then the galaxy should be colonized by now. Not by one civilization, by thousands. So why haven't we seen them? Why haven't we heard from them? And what does that silence mean for us? Let me introduce you to one of the most sobering concepts in all of science. It's called the Great Filter. The idea proposed by economist Robin Hansen in the late 1990s is this. Somewhere between the formation of a habitable planet and the emergence of a galaxy-spanning civilization, there is a barrier, a filter so difficult to pass that almost no one makes it through. Now, that filter could be behind us. Maybe the jump from non-life to life is incredibly rare. Maybe the evolution of complex cells is almost impossible. Maybe intelligence itself is a cosmic fluke. If that's true, if the filter is behind us, then we're extraordinarily lucky. We're the winners of the cosmic lottery. But there's another possibility, one that keeps me awake at night. What if the great filter is ahead of us? What if intelligent civilizations routinely destroy themselves before they can colonize the stars? Think about it. We've only had nuclear weapons for 80 years. 
We've come close to using them terrifyingly close multiple times. The Cuban Missile Crisis, the 1983 Soviet False Alarm Incident, miscommunications during the Cold War that nearly ended everything. We are living on borrowed time. I've spent a lot of time thinking about self-destruction. Not because I'm a pessimist, I'm not. But because the evidence is overwhelming. Every technological civilization eventually develops the means to destroy itself. For us, it started with nuclear fission. Then thermonuclear fusion. Then biological weapons, chemical agents, autonomous drones, artificial intelligence systems that could, if misaligned, optimize the world in ways that don't include us. The pattern is clear. The more advanced we become, the more powerful our tools and the more catastrophic our potential mistakes. There are currently more than 12,000 nuclear warheads in the world. According to studies published in Nature and the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, a large-scale nuclear exchange would inject so much soot into the stratosphere that global temperatures could drop by 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, triggering a nuclear winter that could last a decade. And that's just one threat. Climate change is accelerating. Engineered pandemics are now theoretically possible with CRISPR and synthetic biology. We are building artificial intelligence systems. We don't fully understand systems that could surpass human intelligence within decades. We have the power of gods. But do we have the wisdom? Here's what terrifies me most about the Fermi paradox. It's not that we're alone. It's that we might not be. What if there were thousands of civilizations before us? What if they all reached this same point, the knife edge between planetary civilization and extinction? And what if they all failed? Think about it from a statistical perspective. If civilizations routinely survive this transition, then at least some of them should be detectable. Even if interstellar travel is impossible, they could send signals, build megastructures, alter their stars, leave traces that we could see across light years. But we see nothing. The silence suggests that the great filter is exceptionally difficult. And if it's ahead of us, if most civilizations don't survive the transition to planetary maturity, then we are in the most dangerous period of our entire history. Right now, but if we understand the danger, if we see it coming, can we do something about it? If you're still with me, I want to hear what you think. Do you believe the great filter is behind us or ahead of us? Let me know in the comments and subscribe if you want to keep exploring these questions with me. But here's the thing, and this is what gives me hope. We are not doomed by physics. We are not destined to fail. The universe doesn't care whether we survive or not, but we do, and that matters. I want to offer you a different interpretation of the silence. One that's just as frightening, but also full of possibility. What if we're early? The universe is 13.8 billion years old. But stars will continue forming for trillions of years. In cosmic terms, we live in the very early universe, the first chapter of a story that will last unimaginably long. Maybe intelligent life is just beginning to emerge. Maybe there are no ancient civilizations out there because not enough time has passed. Maybe we're among the first. According to a paper published in Astrobiology in 2020, the peak of habitable planet formation likely occurred less than 5 billion years ago. Earth formed relatively early in this window. We may genuinely be among the first wave of intelligence to arise in the Milky Way. If that's true, then the responsibility is ours. We are not latecomers to a crowded galaxy. We are pioneers. And what we do in the next century, the choices we make about war, climate, technology, artificial intelligence, will ripple across billions of years. I'm 72 years old now. I won't live to see us become an interstellar species. But I believe it's possible. I believe we can survive the great filter. Not through wishful thinking, but through intentional effort. We need to prioritize long-term survival over short-term profit. We need to invest in renewable energy, space exploration, and asteroid deflection systems. We need to develop artificial intelligence, carefully, with alignment and safety, 
as foundational principles. We need to stop thinking like tribes and start thinking like a species. Because the universe is indifferent, it will not save us. Only we can do that. Imagine this. It's the year 2300. Humanity has survived. We've stabilized the climate, abolished nuclear weapons, aligned our AI systems with human values, built sustainable energy grids across the planet. And now, for the first time, we're sending ships to the stars. Not warships, not weapons, but vessels carrying seeds, art, music, mathematics, the story of a species that nearly destroyed itself and chose not to. That's the future I want. Not because I'll see it, but because it's worth fighting for. When I was a graduate student, my advisor told me something I've never forgotten. He said, physics describes what is, but it cannot tell you what should be. That's a choice only you can make. And he was right. The laws of thermodynamics don't care whether we thrive or perish. The equations of general relativity don't distinguish between a dead planet and a living one. But we care, and that makes all the difference. The silence of the cosmos is not a death sentence. It's a mirror. It shows us what happens when civilizations fail to navigate the transition. But it also shows us that we have a choice. We are not passengers in this story. We are the authors. And the next chapter, the one that determines whether we join the silence or break it, is being written right now by us. Thank you for spending time with me. Before you go, tell me, do you think the great filter is behind us or ahead? And what can we do to ensure humanity survives? Leave your thoughts below. Subscribe if you'd like to explore more questions like this. And remember, the silence is not destiny. It's a warning. And warnings can be heeded. 